If you spend time on the internet, of course you do, then you might have seen more and more people recommending the AWS CDK. And it's true, the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or CDK, is rapidly growing in popularity. So in this video, we're going to look at what it is, why it exists, and how you can use it to build infrastructure in code. But first, a bit of history. The story of AWS's Cloud Development Kit began only a few years ago in the late 2010s. AWS was already a giant in cloud computing, and developers around the world were deploying and managing their cloud infrastructure through services like AWS CloudFormation. CloudFormation is AWS's native infrastructure as code service, and it lets you write JSON or YAML templates that describe what backend resources your application needs in the cloud. So you can create them without having to click about in the AWS console, which isn't particularly scalable. For many engineers though, CloudFormation with its long-winded templates, it felt like writing novels to describe what could be drawn in a few diagrams. Developers really wanted a simpler, more intuitive way to define their cloud environments using familiar programming concepts. Abstractions were created on top of CloudFormation to make it a bit more simple to use. So things like Serverless Framework, which I've talked a lot about on this channel in the past, but also SAM, which stands for Serverless Application Model. And that's kind of like a trimmed down, streamlined abstraction over CloudFormation. But none of these are really game changing. They just cut down a bit of the template code that you had to write. You still had to write template code though, which was a problem. The initial idea for the CDK started internally at AWS as engineers began to question, what if we could write infrastructure code the way that we write application code? This would mean using real programming languages with loops and conditionals and all of the tools that developers love to create your AWS resources that way. The development of the CDK wasn't a straightforward journey though. It needed a radical shift in thinking, not just for AWS engineers, but for the global community that have been accustomed to this declarative nature of CloudFormation and other IAC templating tools like Terraform. Because the CDK essentially replaces lovely declarative templates with error-prone sequential code, it did need a bit of a culture shift. But the AWS team carried on with it. They saw a future where infrastructure could be treated with the same creativity and the same flexibility as any other software you might write. So that makes cloud development more accessible and a lot more flexible. So to bring this vision to life, AWS assembled a team of engineers who were not just cloud experts, but also passionate about developer experience. They knew the CDK needed to be more than just an abstraction layer over cloud formation. They'd already done that with the SAM. It needed to actually be a bridge that spoke both the language of the infrastructure and the syntax of developers' favorite programming languages. So over a few months, the team meticulously worked on an architecture they introduced constructs. So constructs are the basic building blocks that developers could use to define their cloud resources as code. A construct looks like this. It's basically a class in the object-oriented world. The idea is that you create instances of a construct and that translates to creating a new instance of some service or some group of AWS services. So like a Lambda function, for example. You create a Lambda function construct with all of your shared configuration, and then you can create lots of instances of that to define lots of AWS Lambda functions. In 2019, AWS CDK was finally released to the world, and it was met with a mix of curiosity and skepticism, basically. Healthy skepticism, I might add. After all, developers had become used to thinking of infrastructure as static, immutable configurations. CDK, on the other hand, was dynamic, and it breathed this new kind of life into infrastructure definitions, but the developer community soon realized that they could actually write this in TypeScript, in Python, in Java, or C Sharp, and then build those AWS resources, just like they were building, say, an API endpoint or something like that. The CDK allowed for logical structures and reusable components, and it made it feel as if cloud infrastructure was evolving into software itself. So today, the AWS CDK is more than just a tool, it's a whole new way of thinking about infrastructure. It basically says infrastructure should be as agile as the application that it supports. People now use it for projects that range from like simple serverless APIs to massive microservices architectures. There's a CDK Construct Hub, which is an online resource filled with open source constructs, and it's contributed to by the community. And that really serves as a testament to the widespread adoption that the AWS CDK has gotten now. Plus there's all the Reddit threads that rave about it as well. There is a learning curve to the AWS CDK though, and I think this is a learning curve that's worth following. So get subscribed to my channel here at Train to Code on YouTube. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be making a series of videos that show you how to build loads of different things in the AWS CDK. 
I'll be using TypeScript mainly, but I'll also throw in a couple of videos on how to do this in C Sharp, since I know a load of you that subscribe to my channel are C Sharp developers as well. So if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to cover, then pop a note in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video, which will be going on just next week. So I'll see you there.